Hi, it's Dwyer, GamblersAdvisory.com, a free site. BettingAngle.us, a free site. It is Tuesday, August the 18th, 2020. Let's talk boxing. But first remember, the opinion you should follow should be your own. Just consider this video to be a second opinion from a complete stranger online. Now, David Benavides, the former WBC 168-pound champion who lost his title on the scales and then didn't seem that pressed to lose the weight to save his title. Right? Benavides, who had been stripped of his title before because of a cocaine positive drug test. That David Benavides delivered for gamblers here on this site. The pre-fight prediction was a KO by either fighter and Benavides delivered in the 10th round over Romar Angulo. But let's talk about him. One of my heroes, Al Bernstein, he's one of the very best. I've been watching Al Bernstein since at least the 1980s. Saw a different fight than I did. He described the fighter a little bit differently than I would describe the fighter, right? Let's talk about the fighter here because he's in line for some huge fights. He's still unbeaten and he's young. He's in his early 20s. Let's talk about the pros and the cons. Just a quick thumbnail sketch. Now first, let me just say, his story is the story of a young guy, right? Older guys understand that you can't live this life and continue to have this level of success, right? Sooner or later, the self-sabotage is going to catch up with you. Now, one of the things to know about Benavides and they point this out on the telecast, is this is a guy from a boxing family. You'll notice a family member is his trainer. I believe it's his father, right? He has a brother who fought Terrence Crawford. He's from a boxing family, and it's clear he was a prodigy. He trained at the wild card gym, Freddie Roach, right? Understand, this is when he was a teenager, He's been a pro since he was 16 years of age. The guys he was sparring were people like Gennady Golovkin. Right? While he didn't have much of an amateur background, this is a guy who early on, from a boxing family, people identified as having special talent. Right? And who was put in the ring with elite fighters looking to hone their skills. By the way, Another guy like this is Andy Ruiz, who years ago was sparring with Evander Holofield. Right? When you see a prodigy like that, a guy who early on people in the game identify as having special talent, a guy who's a teenager sparring with great fighters, then let's use my parlance. The guy is either a fastball pitcher, and by that I mean he is A-plus in a certain style, right? If you're a baseball fan, you understand there's some guys with amazing fastballs. Fastball moves, it's 98 miles an hour and higher, but the guy doesn't really know how to do a lot of other things. Right? He might be a relief pitcher. In other words, Mike Tyson never really had a back foot. He's with Cus D'Amato, a guy who had developed many fighters. Right? Think Floyd Patterson. Think Torres. Right? In other words, he's around people who know boxing. They thought he was special. But as you looked at Tyson, you understood. Tyson was special in a certain fight style. 
right? He wasn't a guy who you would say could get on his toes and dance. He didn't have those skills. He wasn't a guy who could get on his back foot and avoid you for rounds. As Tyson himself has said, he fought one speed. He wasn't a guy who could change speeds, change the cadence of a fight. Now, either Benavides is that guy or Benavides is, we'll call him a Salvador Sanchez guy, a Mickey Mantle, a Mike Trout, a Willie Mays, right? A guy who, for whatever reason, is wired a certain way, where at a young age, he just understands the sport. Ray Leonard, right? And wants to figure out the nuances of the sport. Floyd Mayweather. Right? In my opinion, Benavides is a fastball pitcher. In other words, he has a style. He's not, he's not a Mickey Mantle who comes up and is a switch hitter. Power from both sides of the plate. He's not that guy. Right? He's not a Salvador Sanchez who is comfortable on his front foot, is comfortable on his back foot. Can be the lead can be the Ginger Rogers dancing partner. No, Benavides needs for you to fight his fight. This is just like Mike Tyson, right? Looks spectacular on film. But then you notice the other fighter has cooperated in helping him look spectacular. So, let's talk about what he does well. Excellent power. Hits hard with both hands. I'm sure the people around him notice the power out the gate. Combination puncher. Right? He's a spectacular body puncher. Spectacular with both hands. On the telecast, they talk about his left hand to the body. He also has a great right hand to the body. His best trait to me is that he's adaptive, reactive with the combinations. By that I mean, if he sees you covering up and covering the left side of your body, he's going to work the combination so he hits you in the right side of your body. He tailors his game to fit the holes in your game. That leads to a very high accuracy rate from him. He's landing over 40% of his power shots when he gets rolling. Heavy puncher, accurate puncher, can adjust, is observing you. He's not coming in the ring with some routine where he says, okay, I'll tap him twice with the left and I'll come across with the right hand. No, this is a guy, very mental fighter. This is a guy who, forget the persona where he's just trying to look menacing. This is a guy who's watching you. Right, so if he comes in with lefts and he notices that you're covering up, he's going to come in with right hands. He's going to tailor the combination. So by the time you get to the third or fourth round, his accuracy has increased. He also has great body language for the judges. This is a hunter. He's on his front foot. Understand, he comes in... He has a bit of a smear on his face, right? He's sneer on his face. He looks like he wants to hunt you down as you move away from him. His facial expressions are such that a judge is going to think, oh, he's the aggressor in this fight, right? He's the guy trying to make this fight happen. The reason this fight isn't more engaged is because the other guy is backing down. Now let's talk about the problems. 
right? Understand, Benavides on his front foot, when he gets a chance to establish a pocket, when he opens up and he's fighting his fight and you have to defend against a guy who's clever, throwing combinations that involve your head and your body, a guy who's cutting off the ring, he's looking at angles, he's figured out how to pin you or make you look like you're running. When he's fighting that fight, wow, right, that game has gotten him an unbeaten record and the WBC super middleweight title. He's been champion more than once, right? He's the reason why he was stripped of the title twice, not an opponent in the ring. But the problems are that, number one, he's a size guy. He used to weigh 250 pounds. 250. They tell you that on the telecast. The limit for super middleweight is 168 pounds. So this is a guy who has to watch his weight, train often. To make weight. I found size guys, particularly a guy like this, who's in his early 20s, as their body adjusts and starts to retain weight, they have to leave the division where they were comfortable. Right? This guy hits like a heavyweight at 168 pounds. That size advantage is going to dissipate as he's forced to jump to 175 and then to 200. Right? Understand there's a huge gap between light heavyweight and cruiserweight. So he's going to lose some of that built-in advantage where he muscles you over to the ropes and he's hitting you with harder punches than you can deal with than you're accustomed with even though you're a professional prize fighter. Angulo's nickname translated to English is the powerful. Yet you notice the difference between Benavides's punches and Angulo's punches. Let me also say that Benavides has a high center of gravity. It's just how it plays out. Right? He's a guy who stands too tall. He stands upright. In my opinion, he can't get low. This isn't a guy who can bend at the waist. Right? He's always been the much bigger man in the ring. He can't alter that style. Right? He can't change who he is. He's always going to be upright. He just doesn't have the experience in bending at the waist and bobbing and weaving. That's not who he is. So to me, he's vulnerable to the Jack Dempsey, Joe Lewis fight style. Not Joe Lewis, Joe Fraser fight style. Right, a guy who can come in, a smaller guy, who can come in and get low. Right, get underneath him. Now, don't understand, don't get me wrong. Benavides can throw power low. So what a guy like a Dempsey, a Fraser, a Mike Tyson would have to do is to pick a side take away half of his game. In other words, Benavides is two-handed. He comes up on you, he's pretty square with you. So what a guy has to do is use movement. And the way to use movement is to pick a side. In other words, you feel that Benavides' right hand's a problem, you come in on his left side. The entry point is key with a guy like this. 
the ring spacing is key. You can't allow him to back you up on the ropes where you can't move. You need space to move. Then you need to come in on a side, take away half of his gain. You need to get in, you need to throw big shots, then you need to get back out. I believe movers have an opportunity on him. In the Sangulo fight, I was also a little bit struck by Benavides' defensive lapses. Now he's fighting a limited opponent. Romar Angulo's in there trying to outmuscle you. He really did believe that he was the powerful. Right? He's trying to come in, moves in straight lines. Right? At times he bum rushed Benavides. And Benavides goes straight back, and Romar just goes with him over to the ropes. Right? Not a guy with horizontal movement. A guy heavy on the power shots. Angulo was not there to win rounds. But even Angulo was able to land a lot of body shots on Benavides. Right? Benavides is, because he's upright, Benavides doesn't have a lean. He can't hide his body. He doesn't force you to run into a shoulder on your way to his body. He's upright. So Angulo gets in and is landing body shots on him. More importantly, like Jaime Mungia, a guy who's unbeaten for now. When Benavides backs away, in my opinion, he's naked. In other words, he's open to get hit. If you can force him out of the pocket. It's easier said than done. This is an offensively blessed fighter. But if you get him to pivot and to back away, and you might be able to do that if you can smother one arm of his, right, with movement. In other words, he doesn't know which way you're going. Then you're too over here for him to square up like he likes. You start throwing some heavy punches off at the side. Maybe he starts to back away. My point is, he's tall. He's 6'2", 6 6'3". 6 and when he backs away, he just assumes that he's too far away from you for you to hit him as he backs away. He does not have a hand up many times. Guys who study film need to be ready for exactly that moment. Right? You see a guy who at times is wide open for shots. You've got to prepare your game so you're ready to hit him when he's wide open for shots. I see an opportunity here. Don't get me wrong, Benavides is one of the most compelling people in boxing. When you see a guy who's this offensively blessed, in other words, he's a crowd pleaser, punches will be landed. The fight's accessible to casual fans. You see a guy, he's hunting the other guy, Right? He's throwing a lot of punches. They're accurate. They're hard. There's action. Casual fans can relate to that. Right? Punches are being landed. But he also has holes in his game. Right? Can't really cover up his body. Is upright, inviting action back at him. Isn't that great on his back foot. Does have a jab, but doesn't really know how to use it on his back foot. Right? Isn't great on his back foot. Doesn't move that fast. Is practically daring an opponent to try to circle him. Right? So this is a fluid situation at 168 pounds. 
I believe Caleb Plant beats him if he stays at 168 because Caleb Plant can move. But make no mistake, Benavides has a chin. Benavides has a motor. Benavides has that puncher's mindset where he can lose rounds and in his mind he only has to hit you once so he's not going to be discouraged. Right? Punchers believe, hey, okay, if I've lost the first eight rounds, I just need to catch him in the ninth to win this fight. This is that Deontay Wilder mindset. Right? So Caleb Plant is going to have to be switched on for 12 rounds. Right? Let me say this too. Caleb Plant has an explosive left hook. I believe he's a lefty. Right? Fighting out of an orthodox stance. Maybe I'm right. Maybe I'm wrong. I'm guessing that Caleb Plant would try to come in on that side. On Benavides' right side. So he could try to capitalize on that left hook. If Benavides, who is advanced in the pocket, right, but understand he needs a pocket. If Benavides figures out that Caleb Plant doesn't have that great a right hand, then a lot of their fight would come down to positioning. Caleb Plant moving around the ring with an ultimate goal of coming in to throw his left hook. Benavides moving toward the left hook, trying to sucker Caleb Plant to jump in the pocket so we could defense the left hook and then go to Caleb Plant's body or try to pin it up against the ropes so that he could use his two-handed attack. Right, let me say too, Benavides, not only a great body puncher with both hands, Right, you're talking about a body puncher on par with Canelo, with Erickson Lubin. Right, the sport has a few great body punchers. Benavides belongs in that conversation. But he marries it with a great uppercut. And this is a guy who hits hard. In other words, if he's hit you in the body a few times, then he comes over and you protect your body. He could take you out with an uppercut. In other words, you don't want to be in the pocket against this guy. But yet, if you could get him in certain positions on his back foot, moving away from the pocket, you might be able to hit him clean. You might be able to hit him flush. Let me also say, a guy who weighs 250 pounds, who just lost the title on the scales, right, he's a bigger man who shouldn't be fighting at 168. Older guys know it's only a matter of time before his body starts to betray him at 168 pounds. If you have to lose a dozen pounds to make weight sooner or later, that weight loss is going to hurt your punch resistance. So keep an eye on David Benavides. 168 is loaded. The kind of fighter who I think would give Benavides a very hard time would be the Canelo who fought Golovkin the first fight. Understand, that's a Saul Alvarez who's moving. Right? Canelo comes into that first Golovkin fight and believed that he could outmaneuver Golovkin. Now, I'm not saying it worked out that well for him. I thought he lost that fight. But that's the kind of movement that would give a bigger, stiffer guy like Benavides' problems. And of course, Canelo can fight low. 
Canelo also can hide his upper body, can move his head. Right to Benavides, who you don't want to get in rhythm. Benavides wouldn't be able to land the combinations that he'd be able to tailor for you by the fourth round. Right, that kind of fighter, a guy who moves, right, a guy who could get Benavides to lift his feet and to pivot, to have to turn to find him could give Benavides problems. Billy Joe Saunders would give Benavides problems. Demetrius Andre, if he comes up to 168, would give Benavides problems. Right? Benavides is great when he gets you to fight his fight. But if you come in with a mobile game, you can get low. You can stick a jab. You can keep him in the middle of the ring, not on the edge of the ring where he wants to be. If you could bend at the waist and prevent him from reaching your body with those body shots, in my opinion, you have a chance to pull the upset. That's how I see it. Let me hear from you. I hope you leave your comments in the comment section of this YouTube video. Thanks for stopping by.